like a person is starting to think of goat farming is thinking about over a raised house i spends over 50 millions mm -hmm. by the time he reaches the time of stocking mm -hmm. the guy only has 5 millions to stock remaining and the stock you have is what makes money for you mm -hmm. so dear viewers never think about of spending more money on the house the structures structures no one is going to buy it mm. the structure is supposed to be simple but technical mm. what makes it technical is the portions mm. like the way you hear that is a spraying yard mm. this is where we always do our spraying from mm. and uh, we bring the animals in mm. here mm. Uh, all of these animals you see, they are over 300, we compact them here. You're serious? They can fit within? They can fit in. Okay. The reason why we do that, we need them compacted and we spray them mm. one on one. Mm. So they all go in here. Mm. Then, where we have been or whatever you see, mm. wherever you see they are relaxing in, mm. that is what they call the exercising yard. Mm. This is where goats love most mm. in this area. Mm. And then the, that one is called a shelter. Shelter. The shelter, mm. they only run in when it rains. Mm. But there is no any goat that wants to go in that house. Really? No one. You see, they are all outside mm. and yeah. no one wants to be in. You mm. would say that it's hot outside. Mm. But they don't want to go in. Mm. So unless if it rains, that's when they can run in. And they run in only that period when the rain is on. Mm. And then they come out. Mm. So there is also another section. Um, the other one you see in is a kid's pen. Oh. The reason why we raise it because kids are really attacked with fleas. Mm. And when they attacked with fleas, they kill them. You see your goats, eh? mm. most of the farmers always have the kids. They are scratching mm. their bodies. Most of the time those are fleas. Mm. And that scratching of the body, it can even cause another disease called the hairball. Hairball becomes a foreign body in the in the animal oh, later yeah. finally it will need surgery so fleas causes that that's why we raise those house because they are psycho the fleas multiply from the dust mm. so when we raise it we are minimizing those kids being on ground mm. and then we put in grass for the comfort of those kids mm. and then finally we spray underneath mm. but if you leave them on ground you'll be feeding them mm. on the fleas wow. so those are the the, the places or the critical parts of the goat's house. Mm. The exercising yard, the spraying yard, and uh, the, the shelter. Mm. I've noticed something. Yeah. Okay, me, I'm not experienced in this. I've always known that animals eat fresh grass. Yeah. I see you have dried grass. Yeah. Mm. I want I want you guys um, to understand this, our viewers. Mm. Viewers understand this very, very well. Mm. Gods in nature also take your own experience it, during the dry spell or during the sunshine, a lot of sunshine in your area. Gods look very nice. Mm. And during the rain, gods look funny, they look sickly. The reason behind that, these animals are browsers. Mm. These animals are meant to eat on the, on the trees. Mm. Whereby on the trees, the worms are minimal there. Mm. So God made them, they are supposed to feed from up. Mm. But we sometimes force them to feed from the ground, mm. which exposes them to a lot of worms, which exposes them to a lot of infections. Mm. So that's why during the rainy season, the infections are very many and those goats get a lot of exposure. Also, if you go to other experienced farmers, you ask them when do they spend more money on drugs than when. Mm. Because when you look at in the records, in the rainy season, we spend more money on drugs, mm. and in the dry spell, we spend less money mm. on the drugs. Why? Infections are low, and then in the rainy season, the infections are high. Mm. So it's the same thing. Goats utilizes dry matter more than the fresh mm. because when you go um you travel a lot i've seen you traveling in many different areas mm. i want you to also think of going to south africa or give you a contact then you try and go there mm. those animals are fed on dry grass dry grass has less water mm. and when an animal eats it it utilizes it more because it has less water 
When an animal takes a grass that is fresh, the biggest percentage is water. So mm. you will see a lot of dung mm. in your in your in your area. Mm. So you see we have many goats here, but you see less dung. dung. Mm. Why? Because they feed more on the dry. Mm. And then your goats can put on a lot of muscle. Oh. Because of using the dry grass. Wow. The fresh will always be wasted. Mm. And the dry will always be utilized. Mm. So like for preservation, like those people, like my fellow poor people, mm. we have no bigger land. We need to plant the grass. When you plant the grass, you have to harvest it at the same time. When you have vested, then you keep it mm. in a dry way. Mm. If you don't keep it in a dry form, you're losing it. So we have vested, keep it in a dry form, and then we give it to them. And that's what they want more. Okay. Whatever you're seeing those animals are feeding on, mm. I'm just doing supplementary with a grass called alfalfa, which mm. has a lot of protein, and they're also eating the silage for sugar grass. Mm. Sugar grass is a sorghum. Mm. Um, me, what I do, I plant it, I crush it, and I store it. So that sugar grass you see, mm. it is two years old. I've been covering it. Two years old? Ground. Yes. Wow. How, I, do, how do you manage to keep it? I'm going to show you that <laughs> and you show it to these people because I know your reasons yeah. why you want these people to see what you have. You want them to understand, mm. copy and do something. Exactly. So without wasting any time, I think take us there. Okay. All right. <laughs> This is for sugar grass. Sugar grass is a sorghum. No. Oh, These people who make beers, mm. they take this and they crush and then they get whatever they get. Mm. The leftover, they sell it to the dairy uh, farmers and even us, the goat farmers, mm. as a source of protein. Oh. After removing the highly nutritious, they sell you the leftover mm. at a high cost. And it also works. Me, what I did, <coughs> I, I got all of this, I crushed it with a grain, mm. with a stem, mm. with, with the leaves. leaves, and I kept it here. So this has been here for two years. Two years. Good years. Yes. And it is still edible. Edible. Very nutritious. Still retaining its nutrients. Its nutrients fully. Wow. You get it? Mm. So, what we did, we planted this. After putting on the grain, we crushed it. Mm. We poured it here on ground. Me, let, I, me let me smell it. Honey. Smell it really smells nice. Very, very nice. It smells like a malwa. <laughs> and that is what we really, the animals want. Mm. So there is a lot of enzymes And I there. feel it, I hear it, I can feel it's warm. Warm? Mm. Uh, the moment you open it, it gains the warmth. Mm. And that warmth might cause the composition of getting spoiled. Uh -huh. That's why whenever we open, mm. we put it back, we compact and eliminate oxygen that might allow that decomposition. Mm. And then we cover it up, it cools down. Mm. So whenever we remove, we cover it. Mm. You get So now they picked apart and now they had covered mm. it up. So tomorrow, today in the evening, remove more and then put it back. Me, I don't do like how these other people do. Mm. Other I, farmers. Other farmers. When a person is poor, he's supposed to be wise. Just understand the concept. Don't do what all people do. People, when they think about of silage, they think about of digging a pit, mm, which yeah. is money as well. Mm. And that pit, if, if there is a leakage, which allows oxygen to go into that pit, the whole pit will be spoiled. But, me, I just select anywhere. I think you can see. Yeah. I just select anywhere. I put my polythene down, mm. and then I crush with that machine. Mm. Then I pour it on. I roll on the drum, which mm. has a lot of water for compaction. Mm. Then I cover this, and I put soil. I can see other heaps around. That one, actually, that one is two, point, two and a half years, mm. over three years. Mm. This is two years. This is also two years. Mm. You get it? Mm. This is all food. So you can't run out of food? No, because now even people have harvested maize. Mm. So the leftovers of the maize, I'm going to bring them here. I make my silage. Mm. Then 
the maize brand that I have got from my maize, I'm also going to bring it back to the animals. Mm. Then the maize cobs, I'm also going to crush them into a powder. Mm. So I'm utilizing everything. Mm. So the poor people who only think about of getting the grain of maize, mm. and on top of that, they remove the maize brand. And they leave it to where they crushed the maize from. They, and uh, they throw everything and burn. They are losing a lot of money. Every family would be able at least to have 10 or 20 goats that are, are feeding on their leftover. Mm. 10 or 20 goats. The family around. leftover. The, the peelings of the matoke. The peelings of matoke. Mm. The maize leftovers. Mm. The beans. Because the bean is a source of protein. Mm. You supplant protein. Mm. You can also crush and make silage. Mm. You feed it to your animals. Or you can make powder out of it. You mean the bean plant, not the, the bean pods? Plant, the pods, mm. you remove your grain. Okay, take. okay. The leftovers, mm. crush. Mm. If it were dry, make powder out of it. Or if it was fresh, make silage out mm. of it. Mm. The soya bean leftovers. Mm. Where do you think the, the protein goes? Do mm. you think it goes with only the grain? Mm -hmm. It also stays in the stem. Okay. So people should learn that idea. Mm. I think this video will change a lot of people. Indeed, I'm sure this video is going to change a lot of your lives, those who are watching. And if you're finding, you're finding it valuable, kindly share it to your friends and family. Anyone you think will benefit from the video. Haji, yes. I want to thank you for the time you've given me. Thank you for accepting me to come Thank and visit your farm. You're Indeed, welcome. I came a different person and I'm leaving a different person. This is the Chloris, Chloris Guyana. Sometimes they call it Rhodes grass. Uh, already stored in its format. So we harvested this and we let it wilt for one day in the, in the fields. And then after, we carried it to here. So this is a safer storage, even if you keep it for years. But then when I give this to my goats, they will not eat all. They will only be picking the leaves and whatever they are interested in. Me, I will make a loss. My work as a farmer and you as a farmer is to convert this into muscles. So if you're not doing that, then you're not making business. So this, we crush it into powder and then we let the animals eat everything. So when you crush it into a powder, the animal will eat these leaves, they will eat these straws, and they will eat everything. And that is the happiness of the farmer mm. because we are making money. The more you find your animals chewing cud, the more money you are getting. So this is Glorious Guyana. I want to show you also um, the alfalfa. I think we can turn this side. This is all stored. This is alfalfa. It has been stored here for over three months. So I'm going to crush it into a powder. I think you can see they are different. Mm. And I also have this. It's called Brachelia mulatto. You see for it, it has a bigger and bigger leaves. Uh, leaves. Mm. So this is smaller leaves. This is a bigger leaves. So mm. now the ground layer is full of this. Now we have chloris there and we have uh, alfalfa here. Mm. So we are going to crush all of that. We do our ration and then we feed to the animals. Actually, in that way, the ration, if, you, um, if you're looking at animals which are, uh, have less muscles, the ones that don't have a lot of muscles, you need to give them more protein. That means they will eat more of alfalfa, then you put less carbohydrates. Mm. So that means alfalfa, you can give them like two kilos, and then brachelia molato, you can give them uh, like maybe uh, half a kilo mm. and then chloris a half a kilo. Mm. So that means you have um, a kilo of uh, um, carbohydrates and you have two kilos of protein. Mm. Then you can add in a concentrate which has a vitamin and it really helps in the, um, in the uh, what they call digestion mm. of an animal. So mm. that is very, very beneficial. So a goat which is fully grown and big can only eat maximum three kilos. You get it? Mm. And then it takes water three kilos as well. Mm. Three kilos, those are three liters. Mm. Each liter is a kilo. Mm. You get it? Yes, so yes. that is the ration of those animals. Mm. So the savannas have gone and the general of that savannah flock, I think you can see him, yeah. is there trying to direct them where they are supposed to go.
now here, uh, you know a lot of people doesn't have a bigger land, but you also, you would like to be farmers. We do welcome you. And uh, me, I do a lot of tests over that. And uh, I let you people understand. Because I know my strength is all about you farmers. You can never be a giant if you're alone. Here we are. This is a section of males. And uh, they are typically on zero grazing. Some of them were imported from South Africa straight away. And uh, they are here in the country. So what I want you viewers to know is that dry grass is a key to the animals. And let me show you these animals that I'm feeding on zero grazing without going anywhere. This is a unit where I fatten those animals. You know, whenever you use these animals, you see these guys you see, I imported them from South Africa. They were too big and each male had over 120 kgs live weight. Mm. But uh, because of overusing them, giving them a lot of females, it made them become cacetic and bony. You would not see those bones. But because of over-serving, that's why you are seeing the bones. So what I did is to start feeding them on the alfalfa, which is a dry grass, Chloris Guyana, which is in the dry form, and Brachelia mulatto. We are looking at different ingredients to make up muscle. That muscle you see on your plate, it is composed of different grasses. One brings in a fat, one brings in a protein. And we are looking at the three grasses, which is Brachelia mulatto, uh, alfalfa, and Chloris Guyana. So basically, Chloris and Brachelia, they have more energy, which is um, more carbohydrates, and alfalfa has more protein. Because if an animal doesn't eat protein, it will never have a strong muscle. It will never have. Just show them that Kalahari. I think they can see the muscle it has. So basically, this is what I want you to see. Looks like it's, it hurt itself. It has some issues, but it's under treatment. That's why it's here. It's not even allowed to, to breed. Okay. So here, these are grasses. I think uh, we, have sh we, we are going to show them to you mm. when they are still in the garden. Mm. We plant this and uh, you plant it once. You keep harvesting every month. You harvest every month. So this is a composition of um, alfalfa. It is a composition of Chloris Guyana. It is a composition of Brachelia mulatto. The reason why we crush it into this is because we want to minimize losses. Mm. If you crush this grass into this, you're minimizing losses because they will eat everything. But the moment you don't do the crushing, you're going to see the wastage like the way in this. This is how it is before it is crushed. So that means these guys, they have picked all the leaves and they are leaving for me the straws. Mm. And me as a farmer, I want to utilize everything. That's the reason why I don't feed them in this form mm. and I'm feeding them in this form. Mm. So also, there is my friend who started to do uh, pellets. So if you want to do a pellet, it's another form of storage or minimizing the losses. The, that machine makes pellets, like the way you have seen, the way I have showed you this, I can even decide to add in uh, more salt, and then I add in more energy, like maybe maize bran or broken maize. Then I put it in a pellet machine, crushes it, and makes it into this kind of format. So this is a pellet, mm. but still a composition of the same ingredients. We allow the animals to utilize them in the body. Uh, we give in uh, some enzymes that can help them to utilize more grass so that they attain more weight. I think you can see how these guys are doing. Yeah. So the people who are, wants to do zero grazing, planting the grass is the best way. Mm. And you have seen how zero grazing does. Mm. I can't, I have tried the other goat, but I can't try it myself to lift this one. Mm. Because these guys, <laughs> has more weight i think you can see this one is more massive aha uh -huh. mm. they have a lot of muscles mm. uh, but because they drain it into serving more females mm. that's why they you can see some bones and mm. i don't want that mm. so people who doesn't have big land please get a small land let's say an acre if you get an acre plant alfalfa get another acre plant chloris get another acre plant brachelia mulatto brachelia. the moment you crush the three you're good to go and you only, what you only have to do is getting this here, put it in the trough, 
let those guys eat it and then you also put the water so that is the process we have as well started uh, handling them here I think you see these are babies of uh, three months and below so we have started putting them on the alfalfa so they can attain more muscles and they can learn more how to feed on zero grazing so this is how we are doing it these ones we are about to win them in one month to come we are winning them and we are putting them off but some of them have really adapted more i think you can see some of them are really very big like this one they also have the same age but they have different blood mm. that has more blood this has a less blood that's why the other one is much bigger mm. than this oh. so genetics is a key mm. in this kind of business Now, um, I want to show you this goat. Um, my friend has asked me why, which goat would I go to? Like um, a goat that has very excellent growth um, and when it grows up, it can do a maximum weight of maybe eight kgs. So like you see, I'm a very strong man and I would like to show you whether I can lift this goat. This is a pure savanna, fully grown and uh, it's four years old, I think. I think you, the cameraman will as well show us. I also teach these people how to check for the age. You see, these are all permanent teeth. And this is um, one year. Every pair you see comes on a year. This is one year. This is two years. This is three years. And this is four years. So that means this goat is four years old. And the teeth are still sharp and very nice. If it goes to eight years, these teeth will go uh, uh, flat. When it makes ten years the teeth will all be gone. Mm. So this is four years old. Mm. Fully grown, uh, at least with a good body score. I want to put it up so that you appreciate its height mm. and also the weight. Of course, I don't know whether I'll, I'll manage the weight. <laughs> okay. Do you see, <laughs> this is a female. Oh, it's a female. I, it's a female, mm. but fully grown. I need to put it up. Actually, this girl cannot go up. That's what you can know. That's the truth. It's your turn. Okay. I want you to try. All right. I might be a weak guy uh -huh. myself, <laughs> but you might be a stronger okay. person. So how Stop do I man, hold it? Lift it like that front legs. Mm -hmm. I want them up. Okay. Yeah. Because you know, um, the media people, yeah. if we try to tell you that these goats can weigh up to 80 kgs. Oh. People don't believe. And they always say, Hamisi, the goats, you download <laughs> them from YouTube and you don't get a very good. You see? Can I hug it? Even taller than you hug it, no problem. It's very friendly. Hello. I think, I think <laughs> so bring that goat. We want to compare it with a local and then we see what exactly. Wow. That was interesting, guys. So we're you able to lift it? No, no, no. It's Why? very heavy. What could be the kilos there? I think it's about 100. Yeah, it could yeah. be around 80 or 100. I like feel like that. it's about 100. About 100. Yeah. So this man is strong, but um. a little bit weaker. That's why he was <laughs> not able. So we want to compare the, the we want to compare these animals. Okay. And um, I want to work with you. Mm. I want to work with you. Mm. We are getting these two animals. Mm. Check their age and then as well compare their weight. Mm. So, this is a typical local goat. I think you can see. Mm. This is a typical local Movende. And uh, I think it was crossed with another local called Chitanga. They are all our local breeds here in Uganda. Um, these are the natives. So, these are the ones me I don't mind about. We saw the, way, the age of that goat. And now, look at this. I want the cameraman, aha. Uh -huh. Do you see, this is one year, two years, three years, and four. But do you see how these teeth are spaced? Mm. And do you see how they have started wearing off? Yes. So that means this goat is around eight years. So eight. it is older than this by four years. But I want you to compare the two. Let me see whether I can lift this goat like in my... Yeah, that one is lighter. <laughs> so you see, this is more older mm. than this. 
So I want you to compare the two gods. I don't want that we failed, mm. and this brother of mine has well failed, but we need to put them in the light, and then we see. So can we compare yeah. the two gods? Mm. You get? Look yes. at this and look at this. This is four years older than this, mm. but look at this and look at that. This is almost halfway the weight of this. Aha. Mm. So what I'm trying to explain to you is that when you're selecting the breed, please don't think about the feeling you have for an animal. Think about the money. If you're buying this, you know how much you can get. If you're buying this, also compare it. In whichever country you are in, a person buying animals, he looks at the weight. He doesn't look at the beauty. We, the poor people, we look at how much we can get. I think now you have an answer. I think another word for poor, for rich is poor. Yeah. <laughs> another word for, for rich is poor. <laughs> so I don't know. So now, those that have been asking, um, which breed would you advise people to go into? Me, I would advise a savannah. Mm. I would advise a boa. I'll also show you the boa. Mm. And also Kalahari. They are also good, good animals. Mm. But this, just keep it for a pride. And the country as a country mm. would help us buy all these local animals and then they put them in a reservation. We do what they call genetical reservation. But a poor hermit like me, I cannot go and buy these animals and I put them in reservation. Because if you can give me maybe 200 out of it and then you're giving me, let's say, on the, just selling and they can give me around 500 out of it. This is four years and this is Sorry, this is eight years and this is four years. So that means this doesn't make sense. And I make sense here. So basically, remember, I've said it many times in my YouTube channel, that every year you spend, it takes 20,000 from me to take care of one God. So if this God is eight years times 20, that is 160. So if somebody is buying this God at, let's say, 200,000 or 250. You're only making a profit of 40, 40,000. So if I'm making a profit, if I'm making a profit of 40,000, okay, if they're buying, let's say they're buying it 300, 300,000, that we are talking about Ugandan shillings, you can convert it into the dollars. Mm. 300,000 minus the cost of investment, which is 100, the cost of um, running investment, that is, 160 because we said per year we spend 20,000 on each court. Mm. You get it? Mm. So now 300 minus 160,000, the balance is 140. So let's say if we have a hundred and we are selling 100 of this, you get? So this time was 100 courts. So that is around 14 million in eight years. I need to know how many months are in eight years, 96 months. Mm. So we need to know if a person is doing local goods and he has sold them at eight years like the way you see, we've got a profit of um, uh, 14 millions, you get? But we need to know our monthly pay. 14 millions divided by 96 months. So that means if we sell it now, this got a project of 100. We are getting a profit of 145,000 Ugandan shillings as Only. a monthly pay. Only. So will that make you a rich man? Will that make you happy? Kids, will they go to school? Will they do everything? Oh, so this is it. So now if we sell this goat, let's say at 500,000, maybe. But uh, I think this goat they can give us around 600 or 700, mm. like for slaughter. Mm. And if they are giving us that money, um, also, the management cost of this is the same as the cost of this. So if we do, let's say, um, 600,000 out of that goat, minus the four years, four years, four times 20,000, that's 80,000. So minus the 80,000, 
You know, I want always to do calculations such that you guys can understand. Minus uh, 600,000 minus uh, 80,000. Uh, the balance is 520. Let's say we have sold 100 of them. Um, and that is around 52 million divided by for four years. That is how many months? Is it... Um, 40, that is around six eight. by half. Yeah, those are 48. 48. So divide by 48. So I have a math repay of 1 million versus 140,000. Versus 140,000. So that's how people start to say that you're a government project. They will start <laughs> to say you're a witch. They will name all kinds of things just because they need to put up their point. But they don't know that the science is all about the growth rate. Mm. This goat can eat the same amount of food with the other one. Mm. But its ability to convert into muscles is less. The other one has a capacity of converting over 600 grams per day. Mm. And this has a capacity of converting uh, maybe 20 grams or maximum 40 grams. Wow. So by the time you make a kilo out of this, you should have taken a lot of time. Mm. And uh, this you're taking less time mm. to at least convert. These people who are confusing us into politics and so on, and we forget about what we can do for the country. Mm. Let's concentrate in genetics. Mm. Let's concentrate in science. We play with the genes. These South Africans guys, what they do, they are only playing with genes and they are playing with colors. Mm. And the moment they develop a dominant color, they give it a name. Mm. They analyze the performance. Mm. They analyze its growth rate, its muscles and so on. They name it. Mm. Then after naming it, they call you, they show you the breed and you pay. Mm. So that is what happens. Mm. But for us here, we don't want to mind about that. Mm. We only want to fight whoever comes up. <laughs> so that's why me... I have no that character of fighting whoever comes up. I only want to empower you. Mm. You become a giant. If we are many giants, we shall even help other people. Exactly. And then as well, we shall also be more giant. Mm. If you're a giant in 1,000 people, mm. everybody's kneeling down for you and he wants you to help. Mm. But if you, are, if you are the inferior among the 1,000 superiors, Everybody will feel pity for you mm. and they will give you. Exactly. Who doesn't want to be given? No one. <laughs> so let's adopt to that. Mm. And that is what we have for now. Mm. You see, in the evening, they are feeding on uh, zero grazing. Uh, zero grazing? Evening, actually, in the, in the evening, mm. these animals are given um, um, uh, silage mm. for sugar grace. Mm. Why? Because you see, most of them are pregnant mm. and they're going to produce. Oh, As if very I have soon. seen one. Yes. Uh, Solomon, have we produced or what? Yes? There is one, one placenta. So, basically, they are all pregnant mm -hmm. and we are doing what they call steaming up. Mm -hmm. Steaming up is the extra feeding you give to the animal when it is pregnant. Mm -hmm. Why do we do that? We want that animal to have milk for a baby. We want it to produce a heavy kid and a health kid. Because mm. sometimes what challenges these farmers, one, um, goats get miscarriages when they're about to produce. Why? Because of less, less nutrients. Uh, that is poor nutrition. And uh, some of them actually um, um, get miscarriages. Either produce the premature's or they produce weak babies, or they get miscarriages. Why? Because the animal does not have high nutrients, uh, sorry, good nutrients mm. to manage it and the kid. Mm. So the reason why we do that, we are trying to give them more nutrients such that they can produce healthy kids and those kids will have enough milk because the mother is satisfied mm. and it can again be bred as soon as possible. Interesting. So. To avoid all that, me, I'm steeping my animals. Uh, they go feed, then they come back in the evening, and I give them the silage. Okay. And they eat it. So throughout the night, they're having silage during day. They also eat at night? Yes. Okay. They eat at night because the food is there. Mm. So basically, 
that is what I really wanted you guys to see. Mm. Or maybe even uh, some other thing that I would like the farmers to know is uh, you can do what they call natural synchronization. Mm. We pull out a male in a flock. Mm. Then after pulling out a male in a flock, we give it time uh, for the females to come on hit and miss. When a male, when they come on hit and miss, they are waiting for others. They team up to make a group. Then we introduce a male. When we introduce a male, it smells in the flock. Mm. That hormone is called testosterone hormone, mm. which smells. Mm. When these females sense that the guy is in and is smelling nice, it's a nice smell for them. Mm. Though for you, you abuse it. <laughs> so when they sense it, mm. they all come on heat. Wow. Then that's why you're seeing all the goats are pregnant. At the same and time. we have a generation, mm. you see the kids which are in, mm. they are of the same age. Mm. So now we are going to receive another group in a period of three months. Mm. So we shall have like maybe 20 or 50 kids just within mm. a day or three days. Wow. Whereby, when even if you're going to sell, you have a group to mm. sell. Mm. If you come and say, I need 200, I know that I have a group which is can make 200 mm. and I make my 100 million. Mm. So this business help us to gather up our money but we also put in science to synchronize and have goats at a go. Mm. So that when we are selling, we sell at a go mm. and we get some big money mm. to invest it somewhere. That makes the farmers to have some kamani mm. at, in a group. Because some of you might be getting money. It's not but, kamani. Uh, but you it's, get it. It's real money. <laughs> <laughs> you might be getting money, but you get it in installment. Yeah. Let's for example, if I'm, t I'm getting, let's say, 10 million. Mm. And you will also get 10 millions, but you get an installment of 500,000. Mm. Me, I can make a bigger business, and your money is probably going to fail. Exactly. So this business helps us to have a group of money. It comes once. It comes once. Mm. And like for a poor who doesn't have money to buy at once, you can buy your animals slowly. Mm. Then after making like, let's say 20 or 50, mm. synchronize them. Mm. Give them a male at a go, it serves all of them, you'll have a group of babies. And of which, even if you're selling, you'll have a group of animals being sold. Mm. So that is also another issue. So for us, we evaluate our business, not every month. We evaluate our business every after six months. Mm. How many did I get? Mm. How many can I sell off? Mm. You get it? Mm. And then finally, uh, we've, we know how much did we get per month, mm. like the calculations I gave.